Welcome to the Sports Arena, your front row ticket to the best in sports talk and entertainment. Great analysis, top name guests, and news you can use from the sports landscape. So take your seats, sit back, and relax. As you, you are, are now in the Sports, sports Arena. Arena. You know what you're capable of. I like this kind of fire. Fix it. And here's your host, Eric Wilson. I'm like, all right, let's go. I get, we get lost. I'm like, I need a minute. <laughs> Collect myself. What's going on, everybody? Happy Super Bowl week. It's your man, Eric Wilson, here for the Sports Arena. I have the privilege of interviewing not only a Hall of Famer, but also a Super Bowl champion running back. Please help me welcome Mr. Marshall Falk to the show. Mr. Falk, good morning for you. Good afternoon for me. Thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. No, nah, Eric, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. So it is Super Bowl week, sir. And before we get to that, I definitely want to talk to you about Drug Free World and the organization you're in. But aside from that as well, can I just get your thoughts on what you or how you felt the Rams performed this season, given that this is your team? Oh, man, you know what? I, I felt like this was this was a good year for them. The way offensively they had produced coming into this season, if you'd have told me that they were going to have the best defense in the league, I would have said, hands down, they are at least going to be in the Super Bowl. But, you know, things did not go well with them. And and at times it was it – was, um, it was in question. You couldn't really figure out exactly what it was. But the minute golf got hurt and Wolford came in, you were able to identify that it was quarterback play. And so once you identify that it's quarterback play, you automatically, it, it was like, whoa. Well, I just, when, when, um, when I watched and I saw they were going, they started Wolford against Seattle. And when Wolford got hurt, they then put golf in. And how much he played, I thought it was, I, I thought he was going to have a problem throwing the football. It was going to be an issue. Golf could have played. And if your starter could play to that extent, you start him unless there's a problem. I knew that that was a problem. So they saw what they saw. Obviously, they saw an issue, he underperformed at the quarterback position. But the amount of money that he made, maybe, you know, they kind of chronologically went back in history, back to the Super Bowl and watched how he performed then. Notice that in big games he was struggling, and they made a move. And and kudos to them for making the move. That's that's a tough move to make, but they made it. And you know, a lot of people I've talked to over the recent days since we've seen the Stafford trade come to the Rams have been like the Rams have been the ones who have definitely benefited from this trade. If I could just really quickly get your thoughts on how you feel Matthew Stafford is going to be able to maybe reinvent himself now working with Sean McVay. Yeah, I think in the immediate, you say that because you know the arm talent that Matthew Stafford is. Um, but, you know, along with arm talent come bad decisions. Uh, and and let's, let's, let's be honest, we, we're, not, we're not talking about Matthew Stafford like he was in the NFC Championship or he won some playoff games. You know, people don't want to say that. I'm just, I'm just call, I'm, I'm telling you what I saw and, and what we're dealing with. Matthew Stafford has a lot of proving himself to do. He's coming in, a guy – Jerry Goff took them to the Super Bowl. Yes. And um, very true. Like, let's let's be honest. And he's won a lot of big games for them. And Matthew Stafford, I mean, I, I'm I don't think he ever won the NFC North. No, he hasn't. And I have been on record saying you give a man a five year, hundred and five million dollar contract and he doesn't produce one playoff victory for you. You know, Detroit was just apparently shelling money out and he had the pickup truck ready to just take it all because the production that we haven't seen from him, I hope he's able to have now under Sean McVay. But I'm very much like you. The eye test, it's not there. I got to see it. You got to prove it to me, especially being in probably one of the toughest divisions in the NFC West, playing the Seattles twice a year, playing the up and coming Arizona Cardinals twice a year. San Francisco, I feel, is rebuilding, but they still could be that team that now you have to face in this division. So it's going to be a very tall task. I hope he's up for that challenge, in my opinion. Think about it. Like Think, think about where Matthew Stafford is, what this situation is. L.A. is not Detroit. I'm talking six to eight games in. If he ain't cutting it, he might get traded again. This is 
Think about it. Think about it. You're right. You're right. Think about what Jared Goff did and what he didn't do, and they traded him. <laughs> there's yeah. no way. There's no way. This is not. This is not going on as long as his arm talent went on in, in Detroit because a lot of the times they didn't have pieces around him, but there was times he was the problem. Oh, yes, most definitely. We'll see, as they say, time will tell. I, I agree with you, but the proof's definitely going to be in the pudding. I want to switch gears with you, talking to Hall of Fame and Super Bowl champion Marshall Falk here on the sports arena. I want to talk about your organization because, you know, I read something that really just – the importance of one man and what he wants to leave on this earth. I mean, you are the spokesperson for Drug Free World. Before you were a spokesperson, online courses were started in 2019, were about 94,000. The minute you jumped on board, it jumped up to 166,000 online courses. And then, on a flip, and then when you take the completion rate, there were 55,000 people who had completed the course in 2019. You doubled that plus in 2020. Can you please speak to me and to my sports arena audience about the importance of drug free world and why this is such a passion to you, sir? Well, well, first of all, it's um, it, it comes down to just how do you want to use your platform? We have a platform, Eric, you have a platform and you get to decide that the people that you speak to, um, you speak about the things that you're passionate about. And growing up, um, I'm, I'm from New Orleans, grew up in the Ninth Ward, uh, raised in the Third Ward. Uh, you know, I been, was around a lot of drugs, was around a lot of, lot, a lot of bad things in life. And I understand the things that can derail you because I avoided the obstacles in order for me to get where I'm at in life. A lot of kids won't have that opportunity. They're going to feel or succumb to the peer pressures of the of their community, of their friends, know, of the Mr. things Garnett. that look good, of the things that look hip. They're going to give into that. And what we have to do is make sure that we're providing them the resources. And that's what Drug Free World is all about. It's all about providing them the education and the information so they can go out and make better decisions. And not just help the kids, but we're putting we're putting packets and information in the schools. We're also helping parents. There's a lot of parents who didn't grow up around drugs and they don't know the signs and the telltales that their kids are having issues. Well, we provide that information free of charge. We're not asking you for money. We're asking you for time. 14 free online courses. We'll teach you whatever you want to know. I mean, we we 20 different languages. Drugfreeworld.org. If, if you want to make a difference and you want to help, or if you need help making a difference, we yeah. have the information and, for you. And, and your message speaks volumes. I mean, very simply, knowledge is power and you're empowering kids with the truth about drugs. And you say it, it best. When you educate them on the truth, they have the knowledge to decide for themselves. And and I that is I think that is a message that resonates in so many different walks of life. But it's so important that. You know, you are taking your voice and your platform and just saying this isn't about money. There is no underlying meaning. I just want to educate future generations so that they know what is out there. And yeah. I, that, that that's the biggest thing. All right. I yeah. want to jump back into football with you here before I let you go. And again, thank you for being on the show. As you know, it is Super Bowl week. Let me ask you a question. If you could go back. And speak to young Marshall Falk back in 99 and 2000 when he was a part of when you were a part of the greatest show of turf. When you got to this week, what was one piece of advice that you would give yourself and ultimately give these other running backs today, such as a Clyde Edwards Hilaire or a Keyshawn Vaughn, you know, about embracing this moment? You know what? It's it, it, ironically, Eric. I was I was where I needed to be mentally and physically. Um, there was an, I, I, I lived in the moment. I enjoyed it um, because, and here's what I did. I called Emmett. I called Thurman. I asked the questions. I got the information because I didn't want to, I didn't want to not be successful. I reached out to guys who had been there and got the information to make sure I made the right decisions. 
And I made sure my family was there and I didn't just drown everybody out. I included them inside the bubble instead of keeping them outside the bubble so they could so they could go through it with me and deal with the pressures and the stresses and the people pulling at you. When you include them, it be, it, be, it became a family community thing and and I didn't I didn't have to isolate. And and the fun and the joy that even today when this time comes around my brother called me, hey man, you remember? Oh, I remember that. And we share in what we what I was going through. Me talking to him about, man, I'm nervous about this, I'm worried about that, you know, and, and then going out and playing the game. So live live in the moment and pre- 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 prepare for what's coming up. Don't be, don't let anything surprise you. And don't 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 the only thing that's going to surprise you, um, and, and it's we don't even have to worry about that. Because it caught me by surprise, the magnitude of the game and how, like, how you you never enter a stadium that's 50-50. Yeah. You're either home or away. They're either for or against you. And emotionally, dealing with that, it takes a little while understanding that you could make a great play and you could hear cheers and boos. It's like, whoa, this is crazy. (laughs) <laughs> and it just just something, you know, it, it takes a minute. And then collecting yourself, gathering your thought, understanding that. I remember running out my first time in the Super Bowl. It felt like the first the first game I ever played. Sweaty palms. Wow. I'm talking. Heart beat, heart, I'm like, man, what's going on with me? And um, regardless of how much and how many games you've played. Until you've played a game to win the Super Bowl, you don't know what it's like. Very true. Before I let you get out of here, you got to give me your thoughts. What you predict the game's going to be like, and ultimately who the winner's going to be? I think high scoring game, and it's hard to go against Tom Brady. But I just feel like what 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 Kansas City has done, and the familiarity of of uh, Steve Spagnuolo with with what Tom Brady does and how he operates, I think that's going to come into play. Now, the question the question after that is, you know. Can Patrick Mahomes not make the mistakes? Because you can't make mistakes against Tom Brady. And that's it. I, I, I think it's a high scoring game. I, I, I you know, I, I think the spread is like three. Uh, I think Kansas City, they, I think they, you know, at 35, 30, high scoring game though. Yeah. And what you said about Patrick Holmes still resonates again with Tom Brady. If, if you're Tom Brady, you're not gonna be able to throw three picks like you did in the NFC championship game and still expect to come away with the victory. So Marshall Falk, ladies and gentlemen, Super Bowl and Hall of Fame running back for the Rams. I appreciate your time here on the Sports Arena. Thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck in everything that you do. And again, ladies and gentlemen, let me just so I can show the audience before we go. Here is the website, drugfreeworld.org. Free information. Definitely check them out. And it's just about educating ourselves so that we can be better prepared for the world out there. Your man, Eric Wilson on the Sports Arena.